Hello, good day everyone. Um, welcome to the business model design class. In this class, um, I'll be walking you through how to build a business model for your uh, business. What is a business model? What should you be looking out for in a business model? What a business model is not? And I'll be giving you tools that you can use to design your business model. My name is Abayomi Adeomi. I'm a business development consultant. Um, over the last five years, I've worked with various companies, organizations, SMEs, and startups to develop business plans to consult for them, ranging from different industries spread all over Nigeria, Kenya, Ghana, Sweden, Sierra Leone, Rwanda, United Kingdom, and United States of America. And um, my social media handle, just like it's on the screen, is um, Abayomi Adewumi on all social media platforms, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Abayomi Adewumi, the Adewumi is without hen. So straight in, let us delve into it. What do you mean when we say business model? So a lot of people, when they hear business model, it gets confusing. What are they talking about? So I'm going to give you the definition and then I'll break it down to you. So a business model is a framework for finding a systematic way to unlock long-term value for an organization while delivering value for an organization to customers and capturing value through monetization strategies. This old grammar is only saying a business model is how an organization creates value and capture value in return. Another way to understand it, which I would draw on is a business model is a holistic framework to understand, design, and test your business assumptions in the marketplace. So you see, a business model is a framework. An example of a framework is when you want to build a house, you have an architectural drawing. Usually where you see lines, showing doors and everything like that, it's like a 2D plan of how the house is going to be, how it's going to rise up from the ground. Um, so that's a framework. And that is what a business model is to your business. It's a framework for your business. It's a funding block for the business. When you don't understand the business model, it's very difficult for you to uh, be able to run the business very well. In fact, I call the business model the brain box of the, of the business because every other thing you do on the different parts and arms of the business is controlled by the business model. And another important thing to understand in that definition is to understand is an holistic framework to one, understand. That means you need to understand your business and what am I doing exactly? What business am I doing? And it goes beyond what are you selling? The vehicle could be static, but your value is sacrosanct. The, 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 the vehicle you're using to deliver the value could vary, but the value in itself does not vary. So like a fashion designer could deliver a value in various ways. So she's not just um, sewing O and bear clothes. She can sew ready to wear. She can sew um, night, night dresses. She can sew anything that has to do with fashion. Now, why is this? So the medium of delivering the value can vary, but the value exactly is, oh, I am helping my client to feel good about themselves, to be confident about themselves. That is a value. So you need to understand what value exactly are you bringing to the table. And some people call this value proposition. Another thing you should notice in this definition is design. It's an holistic framework to design. So when you understand the model, then you sit down to design it. Now, after using our illustration of the building, of the architectural drawing, immediately the architectural drawing is ready. Some clients will say, you know what? I want to visualize how it's going to be when it is done. So a 3D design is commissioned. And then that's when you see the design of how it's going to look like, the car standing, the grass, the, that is, you need to design your business also. And the third part of this um, definition is, it's an holistic framework to test your business assumptions in the marketplace. It doesn't matter how good your assumptions are. It doesn't matter how much historical data you have. At the end of the day, the market tests all your assumptions. The market is the one that will determine whether you are right in your assumptions or you were wrong. 
So a business model helps you to quickly test your assumption in the marketplace. So in understanding what the business model is, I'll give you some more understanding of what a business model is and why it is important to you as a business owner. See, a business model is a critical element for any startup success as it is what unlock value in the long term. Like I said at the beginning that it's like the brain box of your business. So um, I, two weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, I put something out on my Instagram account. You can still check it, which I called, uh, I, liken to, I liken the business operation to the human operation, the business system to the human system. And the brain, I liken the brain to the business model, while I liken the art to the marketing. The blood is the finance. The arteries and the veins are the system and processes. Why the arms, I mean the legs and your hands, are the people. So just if you look at the human body, the brain controls every other part of the body. When they say somebody is paralyzed, essentially what they mean is not just that the hand does not want to work. It means the instruction that is being passed, the part of the brain that should pass instruction to it is not functioning well. So that is how you see your business model. It is a very intriguing part. And that's why many businesses die at the first eat of uh, problem, challenges, pandemic, recession, because their model is not well defined. So they are just grappling at everything and anything. It is a critical element. If you determine, if you are determined to be in this business profitably and sustainably for a long time. Developing a business model isn't only about monetization strategy, it's way more holistic. And I will explain this in the next slide. When we say business model, so many acclaimed entrepreneurs and even renowned uh, business people who call, they liken your business model to how you make money. Your revenue model is just an integral part, not the business model. Now, business model shows how a business creates value for several stakeholders. From your business model, you're able to understand what value am I creating for my partners? What value am I creating for my customers? What value am I creating for my team members? What value am I creating for the community? What value am I creating as a whole for shareholders and investors? And in fact, what value am I creating for myself as the founder? It's about what makes users, customers, subscribers, uh, purchasers, anytime you want to call it, is this reason why they come back to your app your service your product your complaint your market your online store this is why they come back and it's how you create how you get value from the solution you have created so i've created this solution i've identified the problem i want to solve this is how i'm going to solve it this is how i'm going to distribute it this is how i'm going to make money from it this is how i'm going to run it this is how i'm going to manage it this is how i'm, to, I'm going to grow it that is what your business model is about. A business model is everything we have discussed, all those things together. In short, when all these pieces come together, that is when you can say I have a business model. So right now, if you have been in business, this is the time for you to sit down and draw your, and understand what is the business model I'm running right now. What is my business model? See, a common misunderstanding, like I said the other time, about revenue, and that some set of people also confuse business model with as a one-page business plan. In fact, many people call it oh, a business plan. Once you have that, you can go on. See, your business model is the funding block of your business. It is not your business plan. It's the brain that helps you to understand everything that goes on in your business. If you go on Google right now and type in how to business model. It starts giving you suggestions according to what you see on the screen. And if you click on how to write a business model, when, uh, that option, if you get that, the result you will get, let me show you what happens. Instead of how to write a business model, it shows you how to write a business plan because you don't write a business model. You don't write a business model. A business model is developed. It is the total understanding of your business model that you can transfer into building your business plan. A business model is not a revenue model, just like I explained the other time. Your revenue model is very important to you as a company owner, but it's an integral part of your business model, not the sum total of your business model. 
And the example you have here is that of Airbnb, where they said our business in their um, slide, their popular slide, they said our business model is this. We take 10% commission on each transaction. What they have here is a revenue model. So, so just so you know that even big companies make this mistake of confusing their model with their revenue model. So these are examples of, ver of various business models that have existed in the world. Some have names already, some don't have names. It's about sitting down to understand what kind of model are these people running and giving a name to it. So we have more than 60 business models that I've identified over the time. And uh, I have 44 here just for uh, teaching sake. I have some favorites. I have some favorites. And for people who are in the Grow Bees uh, coaching club, I'm going to be highlighting some um, business models they should be looking at, especially for a business that is going to thrive in a third world country. There are some models you should be looking at at the start up stage of your business. There are some models you should look at at the growing up stage of your business. And there are some models you should look at when you are consolidating market share or trying to stop um, a decline of your market share. We're going to talk more on that for people that are in uh, my private coaching uh, group that I call the Grobies um, Coaching Club. So let's do a quick test. If you're listening to this right now on whatever platform you're listening to it, I want you to just think. You've, Amazon is very popular. Jeff Bezos is the richest man in the world right now, and he owns Amazon. If you have to sit down and understand what kind of model would you say Amazon is running? Looking at um, what we have here in, the 40, in this 44 that I have here, what model is Amazon running? What model is Kentucky Fried Chicken running, or popularly known as KFC? What model is Facebook running? I'm giving you a minute to do that. So by now, I'm sure you already have something written down. Amazon works their model. And yes, I should note this. Some businesses have grown to a level in which they have more than one business model they are running on because they are trying to spread their resources to withstand shock. So Amazon works on the model of distribution and platform. Distribution is a, is a model on its own. Another one is platform model. KFC works on heavily franchised model and also secrecy model. That's how you see our oh, chicken is made with um, best chicken and a secret recipe. And um, Facebook runs on Facebook runs on social platform and content distribution. Social platform and content distribution. Jumia works on platform and commission. Why Zoom works on freemium. These are nice models that we can talk about any day and every day that are working well in the world. But the good thing about business model is you don't copy another person. It's just like somebody's brain. You cannot pick somebody's old brain and put it in your brain and it work for you because you are different. So you cannot just copy this model. You need to understand what works for your business and what you're trying to achieve with your business. That is how to come up with a business model. Now, I know this sounds so abstract already. Like, how do I create this model? How do I go about it? See, in building your business model, there are different ways you can build a business model. But one strategy, one way, and one route I have loved and I've used for my client over the last five years is the business model canvas. Why do I love the business model canvas? Because you can visualize the whole business model on a page. It gives you an overview of everything you need to know at a glance. It combines brevity with richness. It combines both brevity and the richness of the content there. So it's all a comparison. It helps you to understand all the moving parts of the value creation chain of your company. I want, like I said, the business model canvas is very popular and it's nine components. I'm going to um, walk you through the nine components and how to, what you should be putting out and everything. So if you can do that for your business right now, um, get a pen, get a jotter and start noting down the important headline. You can get a fresh sheet of paper or open a Word document on your laptop right now and put each heading on a fresh page. Then you can start filling it. So the first one is value proposition. Value proposition is saying, what are you solving? What problem are you solving? How are you solving it? What problem is important to you? How are you solving it? Problem, solution. 
coming together, you form your value proposition. And I have a hack for getting value proposition statement because many people make a mistake here. When they say value proposition, they will just write sewing clothes, buying and selling shoes. That is not value proposition, that is the medium. And when you do that, you streamline yourself and you make it very difficult for yourself to grow. So one way I do value proposition is answering three questions. The question of what are you selling? Who are you selling to? Why is it valuable? Again, what are you selling? Who are you selling? Why is it valuable? In a statement together, that's a value proposition statement. And you can have more than one value proposition statement. We have the cost structure. How much time and money would be required to do this? Your cost structure. What are you going to be spending money on? Oh, I'm going to be spending heavily on marketing. I'll be spending heavily on storage. I'll be spending heavily on distribution network. I'll be spending heavily on um, online, uh, online uh, web services. I'll be spending heavily on affiliate commission. Understand your cost structure. And that brings us to the revenue streams. How are you going to make money? Apart from the only way you have thought about making money in your business, what other way can you make money in that business? This forces you to think. So you sew clothes for people, you're a fashion designer. Have you thought of other ways to make money in fashion designing? Can you do clothes makeovers? People that have sold clothes for you that are more than one year, bringing it back for um, making it look again, maybe loosening it, repackaging it. Have you thought of, have you thought about consultancy? Have you thought about online courses? Have you thought about, thought about eBooks? Have you thought about training? Then you have to look at the key partners. What external partnerships should you invest in? So who is important to your business? Mentors, lawyers, distributors, suppliers, regulators. Understand your key partners. People that when they say yes, their yes affect your business. When they say no, they are not affect your business. And whoever you have designated in this area, you need to create and understand how to interact with them and deal with them. You have the key activities. What will you spend? most of your time doing in your business what are the things that are important to you product development sales um construction marketing what will you be spending most of your time doing in your business key resources what will it cost you do you need a manufacturing plant do you need a co-working space do you need an online e-commerce store do you need a website do you need an intellectual property the ip do you need uh, expertise? What do you need as a key resource that will make it easy for you to achieve your goal? Customer segment. So you've created the value. Who are you delivering this value to? Who is your customer? And when I say who is your customer, saying everybody does not help you. Everybody cannot be your customer. So you need to drill down and understand what's the age range of my, cost, of my average customers. Be honest with yourself. What's the economic capacity? One way I always tell people is, if you're in Nigeria and you're listening to this right now, just think about it. If I'm selling this product, how much would my ideal customer be earn, should be earning per month for them to afford this kind of product? I'm not talking of people that maybe they will just defy the other, but generally, how much should they be earning? If I'm earning this a month, will I be able to afford this? Even if I can afford it, would it be a priority to me? So you also need to understand, do you have a free segment of your customer? of your customer segment, maybe there are some segments of your customer you offer free tools for, free value for in order to amplify the other one. I'll give you an example later on. Channel, how will your customers find out about you and reach you and do business with you? Do you have a brick and mortar store? Are you an e-commerce store? Are you coming through affiliates, retailers, wholesalers, super distributors, phone call, social media DMs? You need to understand the channel. And relationship. Is it going to be a personalized relationship or mass market relationship? If it's personalized, that means you are delivering a service to them. And these people, you're delivering value to them and these people need to see you. So, and for some other people, it might not be that. It might be mass market. Say you are producing pure water. Nobody needs to know the CEO of the pure water company for drinking the pure water. And it can be a bridge of both. Like in my company personally, we have some of our, we have some digital products to sell, which we have a mass market approach with people. You come, you go through emails and all those things. Then we have the project client, which is personally, I want to do a business plan. I want to build a marketing 
project that is more of a personalized relationship. And these are the nine components of a business model canvas. This is an example of a business model canvas. This is for the for Facebook, the world leading social media networking sites. You can see their value proposition, connect with your friends, discover and learn, express yourself. If you, are, if you look deeply, either of these three or either or all of these three are why you go to Facebook. You see the channels, website and mobile apps, customer segments, internet users, and then revenue streams free. Now, but because they offer this service free, it makes the other two segments in their value proposition valuable and a money revenue um, stream for them. Look into your business and understand what part of my business can I offer as a free service to people? This is Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is a product. Why Facebook is a service or a platform? We have Kentucky Fried Chicken as a product. So you need to understand the difference. Go on Google and search for business model canvas of notable companies in the world. You will see samples of Airbnb, Apple, um, Google, a lot of them. Now, this used to be what I, I, I use for many clients. But over the last one year, I have what I call the updated business. Sorry. I have a bit of a break. OK, sorry for the breaking down. As against what you have here, where you have um, many of these uh, part of it that are difficult to, um, you have to explain and think about them. Some of them are two business terms for people who are beginners and who want to just build their business. They don't have an understanding of what to do. So this is why I have the updated business model canvas. It focuses on simplifying each block in the standard BMC by adding more blocks. So this one is more than nine. And the goal is for you to have a more descriptive um, blocks that in the value creation process. And I will show it to you now. Uh, you can copy it, you can screenshot it, you can write it down. But this is a guide that I recommend to you and I will be looking forward to you using to submit your business model to me if you are in the Groobies Coaching Club. This is the model. So yeah, as against just having value proposition, we have the why and the what. Why is saying, is there a problem that you want to solve in your business idea? Are there unmet needs of the target customers in a given market that can be opportunity for you? You come to solution. What new thing are you bringing to the market to solve existing problem? How are you planning to fulfill the needs and expectations of your target customers? I want to, you, should, you can use to understand what you're creating, the value proposition you are creating that is it really new, is it innovative, is the ERCC model. I call it ERCC. And it is, what are you eliminating? What are you reducing? What are you raising and what are you creating? ERRC rather. What are you eliminating? What are you reducing? What are you raising and what are you creating? Now, also the customers is there define your target customers, and then understanding this three things of the problem, solution, and the customers. What is the product you are now creating? What's the unique proposition in this product? What are the features that stand out for, you, for people there? What value does it deliver to people? Oh, we have added a 2.4 gigahertz, uh, gigahertz memory to this phone. What does it do for me as a customer? It helps you to open unlimited tabs on your phone. We have added 54 megapixels of camera to the phone. What does it do? It helps you to take clear picture at night. Oh, we have added stability feature into it. Oh, it helps you to take picture even when you're on Okada. That is a product feature. That's a product benefit and value. You come to the market. How big is the market you're planning to cover? Here yeah, you can use what I call the term, sum, and sum. Total addressable market, serviceable addressable market, share of market or serviceable obtainable market. Read about it to understand what we mean by market size. Are you entering a new market, an existing market or a declining market? You need to understand this because how you play in each of these is different. If you are, you are operating in an emerging market, the way you position yourself is different from when you are operating in an existing market that competition is already 
is already right. And the way you position yourself in a declining market is different. Competitors, who are the leading players in the market that you are entering? Do you know their main strengths and weaknesses? I use a competitive analysis tool in which I have the name of the company, their strength, their weaknesses, and my competitive advantage over there. So do that for all your competitors too. Then team, who are the members of your team? Why are they qualified to take on this project? When you come to promotion, how will you raise awareness and promote your... You need to understand, this is marketing part of it. How will you promote it? If it is not enough for you to have a wonderful business idea, how will it be promoted to people? How are you going to distribute? You know, distribution could actually hamper you. Why in the promotion you are hoping to get the, gain a market share, a mind share of your customers? You want to repay, remain top, Toma, top of the mind awareness. In distribution, you want to be there at the point of purchase. Where are people purchasing? Where are they? How are you going to get it to them where they need it and when they need, where they need it? Partners, who will you be your key partners? You need to understand that. Then you need to come to your financial side. What's the initial investment you need to put into this business? Startup cost. Don't deceive yourself. Ask, call. I was speaking with a client yesterday who came to the office yesterday, and one of the things that we're doing, okay, she actually had to send a mail to different companies in China for what they want to produce for her. They sent quotation to her. We sat down, understood the quotation. We broke it down to understand the customs rate and to get the landing cost per unit to Nigeria and then from that place to our factory, to our warehouse, the landing cost. You need to understand how much investment you need. So you don't start a business that you don't have the capacity to take on. Running cost, how will your overhead look like? What will you be spending money on regularly? How much will office take? How much will marketing take? How much will utilities take? How much will consumables take? How much will personnel cost? Your revenue streams, how will this business model make money? There are so many ways of making money, but which model are you going to be taking? Financing, how do you plan to cover the initial cost? Are you taking a personal savings, family and friends and foes, just like somebody called it the other day, loan, debt, debt financing, equity financing, grant? You need to understand and have a plan for each of these. See, by now you should you understand that running a business goes beyond just designing a business model goes beyond just sitting down and just starting a business. This is why you need a business model. If you can do this for your business, you will understand where you are going and where you are coming from. Now, if you are part of this of my of the coaching club, um, this is a task for you. Like I said, I was going to drop for you. So I want you to create your business model. And if you're just listening to these on any platform and you're not part of my coaching club too, I would also advise you to create your business model canvas now. Do not procrastinate. You can create manually. Get a cardboard. Paste it on the wall. Draw the 13 components that are here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 components on the cardboard. Then get sticky notes of different color and paste each on different part of the column and start imputing and answering the question. It can take you days. It can take you weeks or months depending on how much information you have about your market. And if you don't have this information, go to the market. If it's something you can get online, get online, call friends, approach your, approach people that are already in the business and ask for information. Do not be afraid to ask for information. Also, you can create with an online tool that I used to use before, Canvanizer, although Canvanizer only has the old business model. So I usually don't have, uh, um, advice to use it again but if you're still comfortable with the old model and that's for people that are just watching this and you're not in my coaching program you can create with that tool it's free but you cannot share or save it you can only screenshot whatever you have done at the end of the day but the perfect one i will tell anybody who wants to use an online tool that is easy is go to ideabody.com and create an account fill up the section by following the prompts you can export as pdf you can collaborate with others to join and check it for you. And you can export by copying a link to share with people to view. So it's very interesting. Although it's a paid tool, it's about $9 per month for the basic plan and about $16 per month for the advanced plan. So I hope that answers your question about building your business model and your business model canvas, the difference between business model and business plan. 
what you need to do to design your business model, how they are expecting every member of the Grow Biz Coaching Club to have this that I'm showing on my screen compiled and submitted, sent to my email. You can use uh, PowerPoint to design it. You can use Word to design it. But I need you to get all the important part of it and design this electronically and send it to me. I don't care the tool you use. From what I want a PDF or JPEG of something like this that is already filled for your business as it is right now. So we're going to do something in the class when we meet and I will explain that to you in class. Ensure you do this uh, so we can have a wonderful time together in class. Um, and we've come to the end of the um, business model course. Thank you for joining. I hope you have learned something. I uh, have learned something very important. The, um, the result is not for people that have just learned. The result is for people who take initiative. Take it upon yourself not to procrastinate. Do your business model. Develop your business model canvas now. And um, you can reach out to me on Instagram if you need any guidance. You can reach out to me on Facebook, on Twitter, on LinkedIn, and let us have a chat. I hope to see you on another episode of this um, Grow Your Business um, course. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day and week.